this is a rare freaking occurrence. It's only 2.30. Usually I'm taking my midday nap around this time. So I'll have the whole day after this to chill and eat. It's fine by me. <clears throat> but in terms of the eating, oh my goodness. I got some sheets, spicy chicken sandwiches earlier. I got three of them. Uh, I don't know if it's just this specific sheets, but one was good. And the other two were total duds. Like, <laughs> it tasted like they were just left in a toaster for like 30 minutes. They're just so, like, stale. I wonder if someone ordered them, canceled their order. It sat around for a while. And then I just happened to get the short end of that stick. You never know. But either way, I feel reasonably well hydrated, pretty well fed, very well rested. I still kind of, I'm still in the recovery process throat wise. So I, uh, God, I fucking hate having a cough, it sucks. But in terms of my body, I feel just about normal, so. I do not see why this hamstring day will not go as good as any other. Uh, but it's not going to be my most insane lift. I mean, it's hamstrings, you know, what do you even have to do? Hamstring curls, hamstring curls, hamstring curls. I may throw some RDLs in, but I, well, no, I totally should. The action of doing an RDL, hip hinging, it is a different way to activate your hamstrings for sure. You know, like with chest, you've got presses and you've got flies. So I like doing a combination of both. But I don't know, man. Hamstring curls, something about the hamstring curl, be it standing, laying, or seated, it's got a hold on me. It's got a firm hold because I like the way it feels. I like the pump I get from it. And... I feel like my hamstrings have gotten reasonable growth mainly from them. But I still throw some RDLs in every so often. Which, it's kind of a tricky movement. I mean, for, for starters, when I was a beginner lifter, I'm talking like first few months, I didn't even do hamstrings. Because in my mind, I literally thought to myself, why would I want the back of my leg to be bigger? I want my quads to be bigger. I had no idea. So not only did I not give them the attention they deserved back then, but I think just in general now, hamstrings get neglected, man. I mean, a leg day will consist, you know, just imagine your buddy's leg day. Let me guess. Leg press, leg extensions, maybe hack squat if you have one, uh, maybe Smith squat or barbell squat. <sighs> Oh, you know, like a pretty solid amount of volume for quads. And then hamstrings gets, what, a few sets of curls at the end? Maybe? Like two or three, and you're like, oh, that's good enough. I mean, not enough, man. Like, how many, <laughs> how many sets do you train your chest with? How many sets of arms do you do? Right? How many sets do you do for back? And then you're just going to come at me with a two-set hamstring workout? Look, man, as far as I can tell, those numbers do not add up. But one, there's one saving grace, which can help somebody who does pretty low hamstring volume. And that is the fact that your hamstrings do come into play with some pressing movements. Uh, there are some leg presses, which I've done, where my hamstrings were like on fire. Way more than I would have expected them to be. Uh... Actually, that was a day when I only did quads, and honestly, I felt kind of bad that I didn't warm up my hamstrings before doing that set of leg presses, because my hamstrings were like, I was like surprised by how much work they were doing. But that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse to say, oh, well, I'm working my hamstrings when I do my leg press. Not enough. Not enough, I say. So, I don't know, man, get comfortable. You know, hamstrings, it's not hard to train. It's not very complicated. Neither is anything, but 
I think if somebody were to lock you down onto a leg extension, jigsaw, you know, what are those movies called? Are they just called jigsaw? No, it doesn't sound right. Well, you know what? I, fuck, what is it? saw. Yeah, yeah. If somebody were to lock you onto a, a hamstring curl, like a saw trap, you know, and that little clown came on the TV and said, you have to do 10 sets to failure, or you die. <laughs> if he, somebody did that for you every few days, you're probably going to get a pretty big set of hamstrings, you know? And you don't have to go anywhere while you do it. That's one reason why I think maybe they get a little bit neglected, uh, because people kind of like, they like the workout to be interesting. They like the workout to be fun and do different movements, and especially do movements that look cool. Like, I feel pretty cool squatting a bunch of weight. I feel pretty cool curling heavy dumbbells. I feel cool doing a heavy bench. Uh, but, see, you know, eight or five or however many sets of seated hamstring curls it's not much flash factor you know it's not a very flashy movement and it can get a little bit repetitive i think that's why i've kind of heard a lot of hate on arm days too because it's like oh well you know i just get so bored of just doing curls after curls after curls and push downs push downs put no man that's well for one thing that's just kind of a loserish approach but you could think about that in a whole different way. You know, if anything, that just means you have a really simple lift. So you're saving yourself the thought process and the time and hassle of setting shit up. You know, and setting up machines and with plates and everything else. All you've got to focus on is fucking, you know, do a set of curls, rack them, sit down on a bench. Maybe, I don't know, play on your phone or just listen to your music for a minute. Then do it again. You know, it's not too hard. When I, um... Before I even actually started going to the gym, all I had in my uh, my bedroom in high school, this is when I was a, uh, a sophomore, I think. I just had a pair of 30s just next to my desk. So I'd be like doing my homework or fucking playing Fortnite. I had a mirror too, so I could watch myself do curls. And I would just sit there, bust them out. I, uh, I don't think I was going to actual failure at the time. Like, I was doing decently hard sets, but I wasn't really pushing it to failure every time. But, you know, I'd take a minute, fucking hit a set, put them down. I guess that was, uh, I wonder if I have any old bicep pump pictures back when I was doing that. The bedroom bicep workout. But, you know, fuck, man, that's what works. If somebody were to come up to me and, you know, tell me they were doing a really fancy pants bicep day. Versus, you know, somebody else said they were going to do two movements. They were going to start with dumbbell curls and then finish with preachers. It's not like one is more special than the other. Whoever does that workout harder is going to get better results, you know? And I think it's kind of unfortunate <clears throat> that a lot of effort and a lot of thought processes... And explanations can be used to like justify a really fancy workout in a really fancy style when you know really all it boils down to is how hard you push it you know how hard you can squeeze on a really you know maybe a lighter squeezing set or you know just how deep you can dig on a really heavy set you know fucking calories in calories out effort out and gains in you know, so the harder you go, the more results you'll get. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, you know, combined with proper diet and sleep, of course. But we're getting close. I forgot my headphones. So hopefully the gym is playing something good. But just hamstrings, I doubt this will take me more than 35 minutes. So reasonably quick. But let's get in there. All right, single leg standing ought to be perfect. Weak side first. A little heavier. Yeah. 
more just like that. Maybe a little lighter. You know what? I lied. Let's do one more here. Let's um let's move on to either seated or laying curls to be determined. All right. To those on a who aren't so closely kept up with the Sam lore, the reason I sound different is because I'm fucking sick. Well, I'm not so sick now, but my throat's still fucking sore as all hell. But that's not going to stop me from a really good set of hamstring curls where I pause at the bottom. So usually I like just doing normal reps, just bust them out heavy. But with hamstrings especially, I do like these kind of pause reps where I sit at the stretch position for like a whole second, do a quick rep, and then sit for a little longer. Something about it. I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to stretch out my fascia tissue any better than anything else, but it just feels good. And usually that's fucking half of it. <clears throat> so if it feels good, it burns, you can go hard, and it helps you get a pump. Sounds like you're good. Yeah. <sighs> 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 
Ooh. Oh my god. You know what? Fuck. I think just one more. I'll see how it feels, but that felt like one more set level territory. Okay, I gotta make a jump set. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. That's enough for hamstrings. Let's see how they look pumped up. Okay, so my hamstrings feel extremely pumped. Let's see if they actually are. And if I had to put my money on, you know, just how pumped they really are. I think it'd be a big bet, but let's, uh, let's find out for real, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Oh, goodness. Ooh. Doesn't take much. <clears throat> Ooh. I mean, you tell me, is that a fucking hamstring or what? <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. And yeah, I mean, only six fucking sets, you know, not the most strenuous workout I've ever done for sure. Oh goodness. But even just sitting here and like fucking manually straightening my legs, like flexing them completely, I can feel that my hamstrings are like, trying to pull my legs to keep them bent. Like this is how I feel standing naturally. And this is them like fully straightened. You know, like this feels like it's too much, but oof, yeah. The more pronounced I can make this line separating quad and hamstring, and the more round I can make my hamstring in general in the back, that's what I'm aiming for. Let's get in the car. All right, you guys, you're getting a cardio video tomorrow so I can get back on my normal schedule. Ever since I took that rest day, it, uh, I've kind of been off my game because typically I record the lift and I post the lift the next day, but the last few lifts I've been recording them and then posting them later the same day. So that's, that's, that's not how to do it. But hamstrings, very fucking pumped. Honestly, pumped to the point that I'm kind of fucking surprised. Like, like I feel pretty good. Just like my whole body, my like energy levels, though I may not sound it. Uh, but that was a fucking, oof. I guess hamstrings just really like those like pause reps with those laying curls. And then I also really like that single leg curl, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I had a fucking ton of food last night. Shit, that's what happens. You sleep a lot, you drink a lot of fluids, you stay hydrated, and then you have a ton of food in your system. You're probably going to have a pretty good pump. So definitely a relatively light day. Like I don't feel like my entire central nervous system is very taxed or anything from that. Not so much as it would be from like, you know, a quad day where I have really heavy squats or something. So, fuck man, not a problem by me for sure. So, plan is to go home, eat a crazy amount of food, eat even more food than that, and then pack up a bunch of snacks so that when I go watch part two of Dune, I, um... You know, I don't go catabolic. Is that that thing's like three hours long? But I'm uh, fuck man, I want to see what happens in it. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't put Kevin G in Dune Two, but 
I guess that was the that was just the director's personal choice. Not what I would have gone with for Paul Atreides. Uh, I'm joking, of course. <clears throat> but yeah, any sore throat remedies? Do you uh, anyone have a specific herbal tea recipe with wild foraged honey? Or potentially gargling salt water with hot sauce or just really anything. Really anything. I'd love to hear it. Cough drops are not doing the trick for me. Uh, you know when you really have to take a step back and realize what's going on? When you take it for granted that you can swallow without pain. I, uh... I realize I've been doing that for too long. So, that is one thing that could affect the bulk. Fucking, if it really hurt me to take down, like, super solid foods like steak or chicken or something, then fuck. I'd be sitting, I'd be sitting here next to the ninja bullet, blending my steaks and chicken. And it would work, but, you know, some people are of the assumption that drinking your foods is not so beneficial as actually eating it and chewing them because you're losing out on the pre-digestive enzymes that your your mouth releases when you chew which I believe that so you know, maybe think twice before blending up your chicken and rice with crystal light uh, not that I think that's a large percentage of you guys but Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of a reality check. January, February, March. It's almost the end of March. Almost the end of March. We're 25% of the way done. Nearly. You know, we're a quarter of the way through the year. Um, not that I really play into it that much, but for those who do, or if you made a little bit of a pact with yourself, New Year's Eve, or New Year's resolution style, that you wanted to start going to the gym and... This year, you were going to change your shit around. How's it going? How's that working out? Have you sucked to it? Did you even get a gym membership and you've just been at home this whole time? Uh, that'd be rather unfortunate. And it's not like I think if you start going to the gym every day, <clears throat> suddenly your life is going to improve tenfold. You know, that's not what I think. If anything, it's kind of going to be a little bit of a hassle in the beginning because now you have an extra like hour and a half, maybe even two hours of time out of your day, which is now dedicated to something which you aren't really, well, you could be motivated to do it, but it's not like a super entertaining way to spend your time, you know, and in some cases with some lifts, it's going to be fucking hard, you know. Or it could be boring, like with cardio. Uh, so, you know, after that initial hump and doing it for long enough, I think you will feel better just in general. I mean, fuck, man. People say that they want to get in shape and that if you're out of shape, then you're well, you know, out of shape. Something's out of order. Something's out of whack. So... I say this all the time, man. If you, uh, if you had two dogs, and when you got home from work or school, one of the dogs jumps up out of fucking off the ground or off the couch, starts running around, wants you to go throw the ball with him. He's fucking he's full of energy. You're gonna say, "Oh, I got a good dog right there." Hell yeah. But if the other one just sits around all fucking day, doesn't really move around much, just eats his food and goes to sit down. You might think that he's got a problem. You'd say, yeah, something's a little wrong with with Mo. He just sits around all day. He doesn't really do anything. Let's say you got two dogs, Joe and Mo. Joe is the fun, run around, active one, and Mo is the slumps, you know, sleeps a lot one. I'm sure you know or you have seen a Joe and a Mo in your life. Which one would you rather be? So, that's all I gotta say there. You know, I'm not trying to 
not your dad, but you know, just for me personally, the more people that are running around the world jacked, the better. But yeah, what is the plan to eat when I get home? I could not tell you. I might just do eggs again. I might just do breakfast for lunch. Or this is kind of an in-between lunch and dinner period of the day. But whatever. Breakfast for a meal. Thinking, yeah, probably a dozen eggs. Whole, of course. So that's going to be, eh, what is that? About 72 grams of protein and 60 grams of fat. That's pretty good. The 60 grams of fat, especially, that's like 500 calories. And then, well, I'll probably just have some toast. And when I say some, I kind of mean like an obnoxious number. Like eight slices of toast with butter. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, that's just a hearty meal with a solid amount of fats, carbs, and proteins. You know? So that's, uh, <clears throat> that's kind of the grading scale, which I would use to value something. And then you got to remember that it's also in the context of bulking, you know? Like, I want, for the most part, as many fucking calories as possible. To an extent, of course, you know, I'm not going to be eating 10,000, but for me to get up to three, four, five thousand 5,000 before I go to bed, or before, like, 6 o'clock, that's good. That's putting me ahead of schedule calorie-wise. So, you know, if I'm trying to gain weight... If weight gain is the goal, I'm going to have treats. I'm going to have some Reese's Cups and some fruit snacks and some full-fat ribeye steaks and eggs with a yolk, toast with butter, and fucking all sorts of other shit. But when the switch flips and I'm like, all right, time to start losing body fat. No more treats, buddy. No more treats, no more little little tasty snacks, right? Lock in. Fucking egg whites. 96% lean ground beef. Fat-free cheese. Low-carb bread. Low-fat mayonnaise. Zero-sugar jelly. And low-fat peanut butter. I tell you what, that's a fucking hack in and of itself. Low-carb bread. Zero sugar jelly, low fat peanut butter. Don't forget that. A fucking diet friendly PB and J will do you so good in a pinch. I can't. I couldn't tell you how many I had on the last diet, on the last cut. But I mean, you know, just simple shit like that. Like even if you weren't gonna dive in head first and start tracking every macro and, <clears throat> you know planning your meals or meal prepping, even if you didn't want to go that crazy into it, if all you did was, in your daily routine, just opt for the lower calorie option for some shit, and you know maybe get the lower calorie option for all your groceries, it's probably gonna fucking result in at least something. You know, I'm not gonna say massive fat loss, of course, but if you're used to eating you know, two turkey sandwiches, and then suddenly you swap out the mayonnaise and the bread with low-fat mayonnaise and low-carb, you know, keto bread. You're still going to eat those two sandwiches. You're probably going to feel just as full like normal. But guess what? You just took 200 calories off your daily intake. Or 150 or 100 or whatever. And that's just in one meal. So if you can do that for every meal throughout the whole day, you know, maybe get like some... Maybe be a little bit more sparse when you butter your toast. Or, you know, egg whites in the morning instead of eggs with a yolk. You know, shit like that. These tiny things will add up pretty quick. And then, before you know it, whoa, I've never seen that vein before. Holy crap. Never seen that chest striation before. You know, like, shit like that. But in the same sense <coughs> that you can very quickly you know, subtract calories from your daily intake, you can also add them, you know. Let's say you go to your front desk, or you walk into the front desk of any fucking building. School, work, you gotta go to the dentist, 
you stop in the library, whatever you do, and there's a fucking Tootsie Roll. I'm having one. I'm gonna take two mints. That's 10 grams of carbs, man. That's 40 calories. So if you do that fucking five times throughout the day, that's 200 calories. And then that's just one tiny instance. You know, you stop by the kitchen, you're not even really hungry. You reach in the pantry and you grab a can of Pringles. Suddenly 20 of them disappear, you put it back. Fuck man, that's 250 calories right there. Boom, and you weren't even hungry for them. You know, so it's just these small little things which you don't really take notice of. But throughout the day, have a pretty serious impact on your caloric intake. So I don't mean to go on like a calorie rant. I should probably make like a fucking... <laughs> that might be too out of character if I were like recorded the video in front of like a whiteboard and I was writing on it with dry erase markers and shit talking about calories. But if you do want to try to optimize your progress, you know, calorie counting, macro tracking, it is never going to hurt. And really, it's fucking always going to help. You know, you've got how many things? You know, workout supplements, like pre-workout, creatine, your vitamins, your regular diet, your hydration, your training, and your sleep. These are all things that you should be trying to fucking optimize. And all things that if each one is pretty much on point, you are going to be ahead of the game in terms of your trajectory gains-wise than you are compared to fucking anybody else, right? You got a solid pre-workout. If you're not a stim guy, if you don't like caffeine, it doesn't do you well, get a stim free, right? Get the blood shot instead of the, instead of the amped, you know? Multivitamins, again, everybody should be taking their multivitamins. I know you took Flintstones gummies as a kid. Why stop now, right? Get your gram a pound or your gram of protein per pound of body weight in. If you're a little under, don't stress it, but that is a, that's a pretty good goal. <clears throat> you know, get, try to get more than six hours of sleep a night. You know, aim for eight. Aim for really just as many as you can get. Train hard. Fuck, man. You know, when you boil it down just to those few main points, it's not that crazy. So that's just something you should keep in mind. Don't be so quick to judge whatever split you're doing <clears throat> or uh, your genetics or fucking any outside factor. You know, try to make sure that all those things are on point first before you start doing anything crazy. And I think you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so... In the conclusion, track your macros, lift hard, sleep well, stay very well hydrated and fed, or underfed if you're trying to diet down and lose body fat, and just keep making gains, man. Even small percentages of progress over time are still progress, and that is every lifter's goal, unless you're at your final form, in which... Your goal is just to maintain where you're at. Which, sweet. But, yeah, plan to go home. Eat. Sleep. Probably eat again. So, when I say sleep, really, I just mean take a nap. And then repeat until tomorrow. So, I'll see you next time.